spotlight in my channel, but this is my way of proportioning for uh, anthro characters, especially with the Digiti Great Legs, I think it's called. And I have the uh, links in my Discord, but yeah. Uh, this is my method of making a adult adult sized uh, anthro characters. Um, uh, I start with a seven. I, I start with making eight circles, and I, let me know if you, to shut up if you already know all this, <laughs> or if you already passed this and you already know all this. But yeah, this is my method for um, proportioning, pretty much. Uh, a few e words that I said in the highlight video, which I highly recommend checking out if you uh, are interested in this stuff, is uh, average average height of a adult anthro or adult human because this can be placed on humans too is about seven and a half to eight feet which is i, I always use the seven and a half method um the uh every circle is the size of the head should be the size of the head i, I make mine a little smaller but that's just me because this this character is actually pretty thin but every character should be the size of the head every circle should be the size of the head you'd have eight of those to help you measure um and what I do is I, I create the uh, chest chest case. Oh my god, this smoothing is messing me up. I've seen them before, but it's always interesting to see how each artist interprets it. Yeah, yeah. So what I kind of do is, and I'll kind of redo everything a little bit. So I'll do a, I'll do a really quick rundown. Um, if I can find the right layer. Is it this? Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you my quick rundown. Uh, essentially, I, I start with making the eight circles on the side, and every circle has a has a measurement. And you can see them here. The Gigi Grade makes everything screwy, I feel. <laughs> yeah, it definitely adds a, 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 a more complex element to everything. But yeah, first circle is head and neck. Uh, second circle to third circle is where your torso is, so that's where I draw the rib cage. Fourth circle is always the whole pelvis for me. Fifth circle goes down to the thighs. Uh, between the fifth and sixth circle is where your knee joints are. Um, and then the sixth circle is your calves from uh, the GD grade stuff. Um, and then between the sixth and seventh is another joint. Uh, the seventh, I don't know what you call that part of the this this part of the uh, feet is uh, I, I just call them feet. I don't know if they're like ankles or whatever because you got thighs, calves, but the I feel like the ankles are right here. Uh, but yeah, so the seventh part is for the third part of the jitter grade legs, and the eighth circle is recommended for toes. So what I end up doing is if I turn this back to a bluish thing, and if I turn this to a better brush, like details and lines. What I end up kind of doing, and I'll do this in red, I'll do this in green. Nah, green you can't see. I'll do this in dark blue. I end up start starting by making a circle. <laughs> Meta me metatarsal bones. Metatarsal bones. Okay. <laughs> metatarsal. <laughs> Med uh met Tarsals. <laughs> I will call it that. Uh, I guess that's their scientific name. So yeah, the metatarsals. Um, Digigrade is better than plan. I, I I enjoy drawing drawing Digigrade, so I can agree with that statement. Metatarsals. Meta bones. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here let me let me re remake the circle. But yep, I start by creating a circle, slightly slightly smaller than what I have in that circle that's just me though you can make it the whole lane and depending on where he's looking you'll make a cross for that so if he's looking to the side you can uh start making a cross to the side and yeah make him looking in like that direct or like that direction but yeah for this for this example i'm just making him look straight forward so i put a cross there metatarsal bones for feet metacarpal bones for hands tarsal carpal i know yeah i know carpal has to do with the hands so yeah i guess that makes sense Tarsal. Okay. <laughs> Learning so much. Oh my god. Everyone knows so much about like anatomy and stuff. You know what? I just know how to like draw, draw somewhat proportions. But yeah, from there, 
what I like to do is I like to start drawing the spine. And because he's looking straight ahead, I'll draw the spine straight down from the center of the head down to around the pelvis area. But if he were to be looking to the side, so I'll, I'll draw an example. If he were to be looking like this side, obviously the, the spine starts at the back of the neck. So the spine would be somewhere, if I were to draw this fully in a sphere shape, I take wherever it meets at the back, bring a line straight down, and then your spine is curved. So it's like, it, it, it curves out then back in like that. So if you, if you, if you know, so this will help you with an action line and your back curve. So then I would like draw the spine out and then start curving it down to the pelvis. So that's what a side view would look like for me. And then obviously things change with the shoulders. But that, that gets into complicated territory. I'll, I'll show you my uh, basic stuff. About a third of the way down into the second circle is where your shoulders will be. So, and the way I measure shoulders out is two head thicknesses, two head widths uh, side by side. So if I were to draw two, two, two more heads here, then the shoulders would be on that one third line at that point. So I'll delete that. So they'll be around here and here. And you can change these based on how thick or how broad or or thin shouldered your character is. Uh, so yeah, so something like that. And from there, I'd, I'd start drawing the line across. And at the, uh, I make another line. So you got to remember, there's this one third for the shoulder and then one half for the bottom of the rib cage. And so I take this bottom of the rib cage and I start drawing from the shoulders out like this. Make a make a kind of like U, U, U shape. And from there, uh, back up. So between the one third and the first circle, I draw halfway through. And I just kind of connect the rib cage there. And so you've started, you're starting to get a volumetric, I guess, version of the uh, drawing that you're doing. I just did my first art fight attack. Hey, congratulations, Jixun. It's cursed. <laughs> I'm starting to learn. Anyone can draw. I used to say the same. Uh, it just, can just take time to notice your improvements. Yeah, for real. Honestly, that is a great way to think about it. Anyone can really draw. And you, you improve over time. You start picking up techniques over time. Uh, but yeah, so you've got your kind of rib gauge. And at the bottom of the second circle is where your ribs kind of curve back up. This is optional. This is just what I like to do to help me visualize even more. So yeah, you got a rib cage here. And then for the pelvis, slightly, slightly, slightly thinner than the shoulders. So if you were to take these two lines down, the top of the pelvis, draw a circle that is slightly smaller. Or thicker, depends on characters. I, this is my average stuff. Take the bottom and just start making this like underwear T shape. And then you start getting a pelvis looking thing in which the spine kind of ends there. And from there, but don't make it too thin, just slightly thinner. From there, I put two points here. And from these shoulder points, I uh, I start drawing out kind of what the arms will be. And so generally, the elbows fall slightly below the, the, the bottom of the rib cage. And so if you think about a circle that follows that center center shoulder part, you get kind of get where your elbow can kind of go. This one's a little big, but yeah. So if for uh, I kind of like drawing this little line here to help me place the elbow based on the angle. But if I were to put this one going straight down, it would rest around there. And then your the bottom of your uh, wrist kind of follows where your pelvis is. And then you have your hand afterwards. Same thing with this. Because he's uh, slightly upwards, I kind of have to like feel out where it might be. And from there, you can start drawing feet. So like I said, the knee follows this line between the fifth and sixth circle. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take this line straight down on one foot, and then create a create a foot, and then like I did for the other side, just to see how it changes with digitigrade. grade. Uh, they obviously got this curve, and everyone has a different leg style. This is my leg style. Then the uh, feet goes like that, and the tail starts from the top where the spine meets the pelvis, and. It follows the curve of the spine. You don't want a tail just coming straight out like that. You want it to bend out. Come from the spine and bend out. So yeah, that's what I did here. And then obviously you got the neck, you got the head. 
And afterwards, you start kind of connecting everything. So you start making shoulder circles with circles on the elbows and the uh, wrists. Same thing here, knees. And then you kind of just kind of connect these circles together. Like that. Uh, follow angles, follow angles. So your calves have these angles in the back and then straight up. Same thing here. I kind of have this angle when I draw my feet. I'm going straight out. Uh, for these, I angle them outwards and go back in. Once again, doing that. Same thing with the arms. The bottom of your arms have these uh, uh, angles again. Same thing here. Just follow, just follow the circles. Uh, same here. And then you start getting this arm is in a weird position, so ignore that. But yeah, you start getting, you start getting, uh, start getting a feel of like how proportioning should look. Yeah, the eraser is huge. And then same thing with the body. Kind of curve it in. Follow the contours of the body. Unless you're draw drawing a thick boy. A thick character. And yeah. That's kind of how I do proportioning. <laughs> and poses. I have to do it this way. Otherwise, I fail. <laughs> um, I worked as an animal vet? Yo, that is crazy. You've, you've done the gauntlet of stuff, Glitchy. That is awesome. That's awesome. My sister wanted to become an animal veterinarian too. Uh, those balloons just look so meta. At least you can draw on like me. Nah, man, it just takes practice. I did my first heart attack. It's cursed. <laughs> I'm still learning. Anyone can draw. Yep. Um, Want to see how bad I am? It's in the art channel. <laughs> I don't think it's bad, but I'll check it out. I do this. I, I do like this take on the setup. I can imagine it is what contributes to your consistency in your anthro forms. Uh, for sure, for sure. If you consistently do this, yeah, I mean, every art piece I do, I end up making a skeleton, and then I start putting volumes in that skeleton, and then I start drawing it out. Um, so yeah, you do get consistency with this, and it, yeah, I, I recommend, even if it takes a lot more time just doing this, <laughs> it'll help in the long run. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, humans have tailbones. This is an extension of the spine. Yep, you're right. And same thing applies with humans. Instead of like tr triple joints, though, just bring the knee slightly lower and then the ankle there and then connect it with like one leg. But yeah, this works with humans as well. In fact, this was based off a of human proportion. <laughs> this is too confusing for my autistic brain. Oh no, oh no, Jixun. Uh, I have a more, I have a little cleaner version in the art resources if you want to check that. I think it's digitigrade from the front for you. Is the hardest thing ever. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, I made my own like digitigrade feet method so that even if it if it is from the front view, it kind of looks good. But I totally agree with that. Kind of got to break into smaller steps. I know I won't remember after this, expect in parts, but each time I retain a little bit more. Exactly. So. Uh, I have a highlighted version of this explanation that you can just like continue to pause and play through and yeah Just go through things one step at a time uh, Play the video again and then continue continue uh, pause it do that step play the video again pause it do that step uh, But yeah, that, I think uh, this is my way of doing uh, body proportions uh, Went to do some emo shopping. Oh my god. What is that emote? I'm enjoying this art segment. It's like Bob Ross Corner. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying it. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, this is just my my method of kind of doing things. Uh, and in this part, I, I just try to make people remember that there's angles at different body parts. It's not just a it's not just a straight curve. Otherwise, you get this really smooth looking character. Put angles in where where they where it's required. Use the circles to kind of help measure things out. Uh, thigh is kind of like shoot outwards and straight so the outside is like a little curved and the inside will be more curved uh chest kind of falls where that top of the spine where the top of the rib cage is uh yeah <laughs> my method um well at least you've got practice I was going to ask actually. I'll check it out on the art resources section. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's definitely there. And uh, if you if you go to my about page, my videos page on Twitch, there's a highlight section, and it should be there as well. It should be the first video there. It uh, it's it, it's using a slightly more janky version of my chart because uh, I I forgot I, I I put the shoulders too high. Just remember when you're following that video, put the shoulders at one third, not at one quarter. I end up saying one quarter, and you end up having no neck. <laughs> so remember, it's one third the shoulder. 
This is the most important uh, error that's in that video. I might highlight this part too, and 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 delete the old highlight and make this one the new one. Uh, I used Maple Sting for my art fight attack. It didn't help much, as you can see. Oh no! Let me see. I will pull it up. It, it is a little hard to get used to, uh, but yeah, if you practice this a few times, you'll definitely get it. It's not bad, Drixune. It's not bad at all. It's pretty good. <laughs> and yeah, you're practicing proportions. Honestly, the proportioning isn't that bad. It isn't that bad when you really look at it. Everything kind of matches up. So I take that as a win, a success. Uh, but yeah, let me remove that one and then put my old one back. So skeleton. I make, a, I make a skeleton pass, then I make this pass, and then I start putting in details. So I do everything twice, pretty much, in all my art 